Hello guys, Prob2010 with you today and welcome to another Sony Vegas tutorial. Now in this tutorial I'm going to be teaching you how to make the strum motion effect and if we play this back I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like. This looks pretty cool and we're just going to be using the tools inside of Sony Vegas and by the way to, do, to follow this tutorial you must have Sony Vegas Professional. Uh, it doesn't matter what version it is, make sure it's professional and supports masking. Uh, if you don't know whether or not it supports masking go ahead and drag and drop any media onto the timeline click on this pan event crop tool make sure and check here if you have a mask option available if you do you can you can proceed with this tutorial if you don't then you should watch my other tutorial link for this will also be in the video description once I put it put it up on how to do it without having to do the masking but we're going to be using Photoshop in the other tutorial Photoshop or any other picture editing software you may like to use but uh, so this is, this is the way to do it inside of Sony Vegas no third party uh, applications just Sony Vegas and its features so let, let's begin what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go ahead and clear out my track so so now it's as if though we started from scratch we're gonna go ahead and drag and drop our video file onto the timeline and I'm gonna go to the point where I actually do something because this whole thing is pretty much empty because I set up my camera but I jump right there so this is where it starts and this is where it ends so I just don't want to have to work with all this footage here. I'm just going to trim it down to the place that we're actually going to edit. And go to the very beginning of the clip. Now this part is very important. You want to make sure that your tr your places that you choose to be strum motioned do not overlap with each other. So if you're going to choose this, you can't choose this, the next one, because they're going to overlap with each other. So the way to check that is you put your mouse at the very uh, end of, uh, at, the, at the point where at the very edge of the point where you want to strum motion it. So let's say I want to strum motion this picture, the next picture I could strum motion would be this one right here because it's not overlapping with the mouse. And by the way, I'm just using my arrow keys to scrub through the different frames. So if I want to strum motion this, I will have to do it all the way back here so that they wouldn't overlap. So we're going to just create markers. So let me just go back in time. So I want to start right here and I'm going to press M on my keyboard and it's going to create a marker right there. You can name this whatever you want. You name this, or you could just leave it blank. I'm just gonna press leave it blank, leave it enter. Click enter and leave it blank. And I'm gonna scrub some more and make sure that now I can make another one right here, which is just press M and enter. And now we set our mouse to this point, to the very edge of, of this clip, and we're just gonna keep going until we're not overlapping with it, which would be this part right here. So press M on my keyboard go to the very edge of the picture and just I'm just walking it off so this is the very last frame so I'm gonna press M again and we have four different pictures that we're going to cut out now uh, so basically what we just did is we just went through the clip and chose which pictures are gonna stay uh, when we walk by and we made sure that they weren't overlapping at each other by pr putting our mouse at the very edge and scrubbing through and seeing where the next frame would be available so if you don't understand this concept, please rewatch this part again, but that's basically what we just did. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention this. Before you begin, make sure that your project and preview settings match up. Uh, make sure that your project settings and preview settings are exactly the same. They're not, you're going to have problems because when we're going to save these as pictures, they're going to, they're not going to work out. So set them right now if you haven't, uh, basically you're going to have to set your project to what you're going to render it as. So if you're going to render this at 720 by 480, you can't have it previewing at 1280 by 720 because the picture is going to be too large. So you want to go to File, uh, Properties, you want to make sure that the width and the height of the project are set to whatever you want as well as the frame rate and your rendering options are going to have to match the exact same thing. I have a video for that, I'll post a link in the video description, I've made it before in the past so you can check that out if you don't know how to do that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and go to the very first marker. Make sure this is set to best and full, and we're going to take a snapshot. So click on this little save button right here, and let's just call this 1. And click on the second marker, and save this as 2. Click on the third marker, save this as 3. And click on the fourth marker, and save this as 4. Okay, so as soon as you save your images, they're going to automatically be imported into Sony Vegas. And that's great because we don't have to go back and try to import them ourselves. Now, I'm just going to leave my audio track since I'm not using it and I, don't, I won't have a reason to use it. But if you're going to use your audio track, go ahead and leave that there. 
Now what we need to do is we need to create four different uh, video tracks and yours might be different depending on how many pictures you have in your stream motion. I have four pictures, therefore I'm going to create four tracks. So right click, insert video track, right click, insert video track, and or you could just control shift Q to make sure you add four different tracks. So right now we have four blank tracks. You can see one, two, three, four. So what we're going to do now is we're going to import each picture on each track and we're going to import one .jpg at the one marker. We're going to import two .jpg at the second marker. We're going to scroll up here. We're going to import our third uh, picture at the third marker and we're going to import a fourth picture at the fourth marker. And as you can see, they automatically snap into place. Now this is where our clip ends. So we're going to go ahead and just split all these other clips or you can trim them down up to that area so that we wouldn't have excess uh, clips or excess video in our timeline so now they're all perfectly lined up and it looks pretty good so if we scrub this through you can see it looks looks all organized and neat so if we play this back right now just so you can see how it looks like so you can follow along it's gonna look like this it's gonna look as if though it's glitching in between each picture and that's what we want right now now this is where the masking part comes in if you don't know how to mask you may have a little bit of trouble with this but it's pretty simple and you should you shouldn't be that hard we're gonna start off with the first track we're gonna start off with the first picture so we so we're scrubbing through and I'm running everything is going good until BAM I hit the first picture and it just freezes until I get to the next picture and then until I get to the next picture and it just keeps doing that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just scroll to my very first picture and now it freezes so we're gonna click on this uh, event pan slash crop tool and we're gonna have our picture right here so no matter how far we scrub through it's gonna stay as a picture because this is a snapshot of the video and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna select this mask uh, button right here and it's gonna enable masking for us And you're gonna have a different set of options and tools available here on the side so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and uh, you can use the simple or the normal edit tool to pan around and zoom in and so let's just get this right so that now all we do is we just grab the masking tool or the anchor creation tool and we start masking our way around so I'm gonna click here and I'm just gonna start masking this around now I try to make this as, as good as perfect as possible if you're gonna if we're working on a serious project but uh, what you have to remember is that uh, the parts you can slack on is the parts where you will no longer uh, go past so if I was walking straight I wouldn't have to worry about the back because I'm never gonna go back again I'm just gonna keep going forward and I will never have to okay ignore what I just said because that might just confuse you even worse so what you're gonna do is you're just gonna try to walk go around your figure uh, get it a little bit try to make this as perfect as possible and this this could take up some time I'm not gonna lie this is probably the longest part of the whole video is you want to just go ahead and outline yourself and uh, I'll just speed it up. If you mess up, you, you can press Control Z on your keyboard, and that will set you back to your uh, previous point. So, by the way, make sure that your preview is set to best full, because if not, you can see that this looks uh, pretty. I mean, it's gonna give you extra blur that you don't want. So you want to make sure you set it to best full when you're masking your image out. All right, so once you have connected everything, you can go ahead and if uh, you can go ahead and click exit out of this. So now we're gonna go ahead and go further. So we're gonna scrub through with our with our with our arrow keys, and you can see that the picture stays. So the picture starts right there, it stops, and we keep going, and then it just freezes up again. That's because we have to mask out the other picture also. So at this point, you can see how our figure looks like. You can go ahead and make this bigger, the previous screen. We could go back and we could just take a look at what's wrong. So we can kind of see that we have a rough edge around my neck right here. My shoe is a little bit cut off and things things of that nature. So you can go you can always go back in your mask and you can always re-edit that. So you can select your simple normal edit tool, pan around, and you can see that our shoe is cut off just a little bit. We're gonna grab the uh, masking tool. Or, or we're gonna grab the normal edit tool we're gonna click here and we're just gonna kind of make that bigger by the way make sure that you have this move free freely set if this is sideways or just 
uh, and that Y only or X only, then it's not going to be right because you're only going to be able to use the mask in one direction. So make sure all four are selected so you can freely make your selection. And having that, oops, I can always press Ctrl Z to undo. And that looks pretty good, even though it looks pretty bad, but but from far away and with this bad camera, you'll actually, you won't even notice the difference. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the mask again. And you can always, if you have hard edges, you can select the feather type, either in, out, or both. And I'm just gonna set my feather type to 0 0.2 pixels. And that's gonna kind of feather out the edges and make them a little bit more softer when I come out. So now when I come out, it's not, the edges aren't as hard as they were before. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go through the rest of the clips and you're just gonna edit the single picture. So here we have to also cut myself out of this shot. So select the mask option, grab the pen tool, and just, well first grab the simple edit tool, pan myself into it, then grab the pen tool. And then we're gonna start doing the same thing that we just did before. So you wanna just create a selection around yourself or around the object that you're creating a strobe motion for. And you just wanna keep doing that for the rest of your pictures. Okay, so I've created a selection around this area and I'm just gonna exit that out. So now it's just gonna keep keep going and going until we get to the next picture, which will also require us to do the same exact thing. So let's go ahead and click on the tool, click mask, go ahead and pan around, zoom in, grab the pen tool and just keep going. So you can see that we kind of messed up on that masking part right there. So we can click back, uh, zoom in, pan around, and grab my normal edit tool, click on the mask, and just bring that up just a bit. I'll change these around, move it down some, and just make it make it be perfect or close to perfect. All right. Well, this is pretty decent. Of course, you can take more time if you want it more perfect. Now, if we play this back. It looks pretty pretty good actually. It doesn't look that bad. I did this in like in five minutes, so if you obviously if you spend more time and make a better selection, then you're gonna have a better result. And also having a better camera helps as well because you're not gonna have all this extra blur and you'll be able to see exactly what you're cutting out and what you're masking around. Uh, if you don't have Sony Vegas, if you don't have the masking option, there's actually even a better way of doing this. I think I. Uh, I think using the masking option is harder and it's not as good result as if you're going to use a third party program like Photoshop or another photo, edit, photo editing software. And you can check out that tutorial, link for this in the video description or just click on the annotation bar above, annotation link above and that will direct you to the video of how to do it without masking. Thank you guys for watching, if you have any questions post them in the comment sections below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Rate, comment, subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.